Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Coming back from or leaving the gym. I'm trying now, I didn't know that there's a 4K setting on the, on the front facing camera and 60 frames per second. So I don't know if it looks good, but uh, we're in drawdown, baby. Um, we are right now in the midst of the largest losing streak I have had by day. I don't know, there may be like one green trade in there or two. Um, in like five months, five months. Um, so that's a lot. So uh, this video is picking up on Wednesday. So we're a couple days in. Uh, first two days of the week have been red. Last days of last week were red. And so we're picking it up and we're gonna be talking a little bit about how to deal with it. And then we'll see by the end of the week if we extend it or if we come back. Last time, my, my biggest prior losing streak was two days. And then the last time I had that, I had a five day win streak in a row and had the biggest week ever. Um, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> How do I feel a bit right now? Um, check this out. Downside momentum set up today. Um, set up that has worked very well for me in the past. You know, every time you never know if it's gonna work. QQQ, right here, double bottom low. Lower highs, putting pressure on that low. Broke it, got nicely in the green for a minute, maybe like three, four percent on my contracts for like next Friday. Uh, and then it came back up, hit my stop. And the stop had to be where it was. It was actually like a 7% risk. So it ended up being, uh, I thought, pretty good because it, it would have broken the recent trend of these lower highs. And it did. So maybe it's going to go to lows. I don't know. But it invalidated that initial momentum or the initial momentum didn't work. So the trade didn't work you move on and look for the next one. But yeah, that's been the story, man, of these past, you know, couple of days. It has been, this is a potentially, you know, we'll see. That's just the one trade of the day so far. And that was the best setup. Maybe there's something, I think NVIDIA has looks that could be good, but it has to get to the spot that I want it to be. Um, but, you know, it's been every single trade, I feel like has been loss, 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 loss. And so there really isn't a way to know, you know what I mean? Like we always say, there's no way to know. There's ways to have higher probability. And so I'm trying to stick to the higher probability and everything as I as I take the trades, like I, they make a lot of sense. They look solid. The overall like one hour chart set up nice. Everything is there, but it's just like, we're getting these quick like pushes down and then snap back up or on the way up, up. Honestly, I've been playing more shorts because market's been a little bit weaker. Uh, but what it's been telling me is kind of like, hey, like every time we get these low, we're not getting momentum into lows. We're not getting that panic sell flush. So that's telling me from like maybe a bigger picture, like swing or macro view, maybe we actually are going to go up. Maybe. Um, I don't really care to make those bets like anymore uh, about what the fuck's going to happen in six days. I don't know. A week. I have no idea what's going to happen with CPI, but that's what it's telling me. So the momentum to the downside is not there, which makes me, you know, a little more cautious now. And it makes you say, hey, these got to be really good setup. And they are. They're not bad. These are things that I've been playing for months that have been work that work nice. They're just not working right now. And so the key has to be risk management. And I'll talk about that here in a minute. May have spoken a bit too soon. We are about to, oh, I might have already. It's done. The deed is done. I'm done. Just locked in the first green day in about a week. Um, this breaks the four day streak and it's thanks to Nvidia. Check it out. So finally we got our downside set up to work. So we had this low right here. Nvidia broke that low, sort of tried to retest and then poof, big move down, played these contracts, which are about a week and a half out, 415 strike, Nvidia's at 430s, whatever. This ended up going more. I had take profits at 525 and then 575, those two hit. Uh, we actually just pierced over six. So really incredible move. I think that I was up like 25% at the peak, but I locked in the last contract at around 25%. And if we take a look at the PL, here you go, live inside the broker, refresh it, whatever you want to do, a uh, hundred bucks. So we had a 50% day and we end up with a hundred bucks, uh, which is pretty good in terms of risk reward. So how do we do that? We essentially lost 0.75 R, and I'll explain that in a second, on the first trade. And then we came back and made 1.75 R on the next, equaling or canceling out the negative 0.7. 
and turning us positive. So the good that comes out of this is it just shows that we are doing something right in terms of our risk reward. We're keeping our risks nice and tight and our rewards nice and juicy. And when things do work like they have or like this trade specifically did, we can see take profits and we can see trades make 1.75R. And so what does that mean? When it comes to R, it's your R multiple. So as of right now, I'm trading with about $1,000 position size. Again, every contract is not perfect, but around $1,000 position size. And so with $1,000 position size, I'm risking worst case scenario about 10%. And then my take profits are from there. So my risk or one R of downside risk is about $100 uh, on my size. And so that's kind of what I'm thinking about mentally. And so if I'm down 5R on the week uh, or four and a half R on the week, I know, okay, well, that's technically speaking, you know, five, uh, five winning trades away, five, you know, one R wins away from going green. Uh, and you see that today that we had a trade that was a plus 1.75 R on NVIDIA. And so, yes, had I not taken the losing trade, it would be a lot more progress. I'd be up 175 bucks technically on the day, but it is what it is, right? You're going to have losses as part of the game. As long as you can kind of craft your system around something that kind of works uh, for you mentally, and that you can just be, be on the plus side of 50% win rate, big picture, uh, or you don't have to be, or have, you know, really nice risk reward profiles. So that's where we're at. Um, now, in terms of coming out of this, you know, it would be easy for me have to see that first trade and go, fuck this, I'm out. However, NVIDIA provided a setup that is literally, you know, textbook for what I look for. I said before in the past, it's very difficult for me to try to play this game of, well, you know, it's a day before CPI or it's this or it's that. So I'm just going to leave it alone. I'm not going to trade today because I don't think there should be good opportunities. I can't, I can't do that. I, I can't, I, I can't do that because then that, that's almost the same thing. It's not, but it is in my head. Uh, as you saying, or really you're, you say you think you know what the market's going to do when you have no fucking idea. There's no, there's literally no way to know, which gets me on this whole topic of like, you know, it's almost impossible for someone to say, or to have a consistent, you know, 90% win rate over the course of, you know, months to years, taking many, many trades, not just taking three trades, taking many, many trades. Because if you are trading a systematic approach, you're gonna, the market's not going to align with your system all the time. And then if you are able to come in every single day, completely change, say, well, today, because of this, 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 and this, we're in dip by mode. Today, because of this, 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 we're in breakout mode. If you can do that and go back and forth, I mean, I can, more power to you. That's awesome. I just don't think that that's easy to do at all. I think that that's a recipe for fucking something up a recipe for having the wrong bias and then getting fucked. And then now all of a sudden, now you're in your head, you're going, you know, next thing you know, you can't see things cl clearly, massive drawdown, right? Whereas if you just trade one systematic approach, one strategy, the strategy will work really, really good at times. It will also not work great right at times, but if you use proper risk management, your times where things are not working are not going to blow you up. And then the times when things do work, you'll really rack up the gain. So for example, if next week, this is all what's kind of playing into how you handle the drawdown. So like if next week, you know, for all we know, the market is riled up and is working super nice momentum all the way up or down, whatever the way we go. And it's like, you know, I'm taking trades and we're getting 1.5 R's, 1.75 R's, 1.25 R winners, 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 winners. We'll have some losers in there and we're having days and, and we're, we're stacking these up. You know, you can have a week where you go plus 8 R, plus 10 R, right? And then this week, maybe, you know, or last week, whatever the weeks were, maybe you have a week where you're down 4R, you're down 5R, which it hurts at the time. But when you see those weeks of plus 8, plus 10, and you know, even plus 5s, you're like, wait, hey, if I can just make sure on the bad weeks when things are not working great, I keep myself under control and I don't blow up to the point where I have massive, massive, stupid losses, right? I know in a week or two or when things come back, because when the system or when the strategy is working nicely, when momentum is back, or when whatever you're playing, right? Maybe you are more of a dip buyer, whenever the dip buy approach is working nicely again, right? You're gonna be fine because you're keeping your risk in line and you know you've got optimal risk reward 
with your strategy. That's why I like momentum so much because when we do have positive momentum or really good momentum days, right? And you have, and you pick the right plays, you're picking the, the, the stocks that are, you know, the strongest or the weakest in those, in those scenarios. When you have that, the potential for your risk reward to be insanely good is very, very high. So you have, you can have days where you're like, okay, my stop is my stop. That invalidates the trade. But if we go and momentum is there and it just goes like Nvidia right now, it, it now those contracts are hitting 625, right? So I was in sub five. Now they're at 625. So when you have days like this, you could say, oh, wow, like that contract, that play is up 40% for my entry. You know what I mean? My stop's 10%. Well, I mean, I'm not going to take, I'm not going to make 40, obviously. I'm going to lock in games on the way, but it just shows you like what could be there and what's on the table when momentum starts to go your way. When it's not there, you make sure you have your losses and keep those losses small. And then you try to figure out is there a certain set, a subset of criteria that even on days where things are not good, right? That I could really narrow in to make sure I'm in the highest probabilities if I trade. And then is there something that I could say to myself, what would invalidate this? Like what would tell me not to trade this? Is it overall context and whatnot? So maybe you have something where you have a situation where you, you only will trade momentum or breakouts, for example, in my case, right? And you look for the strongest or the weakest stocks. If we're going down on that day, the overall market's down, we look for weak stocks. And if it's strong, we look for the strong stocks. So today, market's you know red or flat, whatever. And video is clearly the weakest. Actually, the market's red. Tech is, everything's down. And video is the weakest. So it's down 3%. So that's showing me weakness. Oh my gosh, is that now it's at 675, those contracts. So you have, so you're seeing, right, the potential of this, of this thing. Now, of course, I'm not, I'm not looking back and getting pissed that I took profits. No, I'm fucking happy as shit because. A 1.75 R is great. If I make a one R, cool. I'm kind of disappointed with a 0.5, whereas a, you know half take profit, half stop me out, back at break even. That would be kind of a bitch. It's kind of a disappointment, and I'm trying to figure out if I want to play like that or not. Um, but you see what I'm saying? Like you see how things could play out. But back to picking the strongest, weakest stocks, you go with that route, and then if those stocks are lining up with how the overall market's also going then great, take the trade. But if the markets, if you are looking at like NVIDIA and it's weak and all of a sudden SPY is consolidating and starting to bounce back and breaking its range and pushing up and NVIDIA still looks weak and it's maybe giving you a downside setup, maybe you don't take that because it's not an agreement or an alignment with what the market's doing and that puts you in a lower probability of that trade actually working out. So it's little critiques like that that you can make, that you can stack up over time that will drastically change right your results even in times where things aren't working perfectly. So it's, that's the goal. It's, it's not about trying to flip strategies and try to change your approach when things are not working. It's trying to understand, okay, are there signs? Are there things? Are there clues when things aren't working that I could, you know, that I could see, that I could jot down, that I can take note of for the next time that will maybe limit me from taking multiple trades or will limit me from even taking maybe lower quality trades or lower probability trades because maybe something in the back side or, or there's some box that we can't check that would line up perfectly with our strategy to allow us to take that trade. That's kind of the, the mindset that I have. So it's because if you think like that, you are 100% thinking in probabilities. You're not thinking in, I think I know what's going to happen. I'm not going to trade today because this is this. If you're not going to trade today, it shouldn't be because of what the market's doing necessarily. Obviously, if there's a Fed day, you know, that's literally you don't know. So like there's, I mean, you know, there can be some volatility and spikes. But if you're not going to trade on a given day, that should be more so because you aren't feeling good. There's something going on in your personal life or you're busy or whatever, and you can't devote the time it needs or the focus you need to execute properly. That's more so important. And that's what I would say would limit me from trading. Because if I'm here, I'll watch, I'll scan every single day the charts. If I'm at the desk, I'll scan the charts. If something provides a setup that checks all the boxes of the strategy, then you play it. Because again, it's a probability game. Yeah, maybe today's a loss, maybe tomorrow's a loss. In, the past, in my case, the past four days were losses, but then you have a win. Maybe another day's a win and a win. And now all of a sudden, you start stacking them up and the game of probabilities plays out over time. You can, of course, learn from your mistakes, from your data, 
and move forward and build something that you can rely on for ideally years and years. Back to this NVIDIA, so check it out. So here's an example, right? We talked about, right, I, I lock gains into this candle right here, but look at this, massive momentum. Massive momentum. I sold at 575, that's like here. It's literally $2 higher. One contract on a situation like this, that's 200 bucks. That's 2R in my case. That's 2R, right? So it just shows you when things work, it the, the risk reward is completely skewed to the upside. Things are not always gonna be this clean, this nice, but when they are and you can capitalize even on just a chunk of that move and you have your stops nice and tight, Right, look at the stop loss. Let's say the stop loss is VWAP. Look how small that would be risk risk wise versus this massive reward, right? It's like almost a three X. So it just shows you that you can create a profitable system and things are not gonna work all the time, but when they do work, right, you have to be there for that. And if you're not, and you start thinking, you get in your head and you start you know, saying, I gotta change strategies, I gotta change systems, you're only doing yourself a disservice and you're not letting the game of probabilities play out because you think, you need to be right all the time. That's gonna wrap up today's video. Hope this was helpful in some way. And um, stay tuned, we'll see how we uh, come out of this drawdown. Now, uh, this week we have two more days. Tomorrow is CPI, the next day is PPI. Hopefully provides good momentum. They have been in the past, so we'll see. Um, which is great, it does, that's awesome. It provides setups up or down. Uh, in the meantime though, right, first uh, green day in about five days or four days, whatever, um, it's good to see. But it's more so, it, it's good to see that that the risk reward, the strategy is being operated, it's being run properly in order to allow me to have these opportunities. Like that's that's what's more important. So we'll see what happens. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys got something out of it. Again, like I said, links, resources down below and have a great rest of your day.